Well, good afternoon to you. It's Johannesburg, South Africa today, and we've got a group of futurists here today talking about a variety of issues. Just for a quick whip around, I'm Doug Vining, editor of Mind Bullets and part of the Future of Network. Gerd Leonhardt from Switzerland, uh, the Futures Agency and uh, Futurist. <laughs> and then John Musgrave, joint CEO of Future World South Africa and a partner of Future World International. And I'm Neil Jacobson, I'm the other joint CEO of Future World and a partner in the international business. And what we wanted to touch on now, we've got lots of different themes between our different organizations, looking at different aspects of how the future is changing. There's one particular one that seems to be very successful at the moment. Uh, we've called it Naked Leadership. And you know, we kind of thought, Doug and I authored this theme some months ago. We thought there's a naked chef and there's a naked scientist. And we were sitting one day and we came across the concept of naked government. And it came, of all places, out of China. Because we came across uh, information about a small rural community that had stopped corruption in their municipality by publishing on the internet all the expenditure that was happening. And when the spotlight of disclosure shone on what was happening, the public officials could no longer steal the money. And we thought if this could happen in China, which is hardly a free society, then there really is something fundamental happening around the world. And that, that's where the concept of naked leadership started to very bad not drawing straws for, you know, validating the title. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, the uh, key to this whole idea of transparency is the connectivity revolution. The fact that now everyone is connected, or virtually everyone is connected, and so there is no place to hide anymore. Yeah. And there's so many themes that flow out of it. I mean, we've talked about trust before. In a connected world, trust moves to a different place. Trust is not what you hide behind the office doors. Trust is now completely open. Trust is how you deal in the marketplace. The marketplace expects to see every aspect of your business. And you as a leader are truly standing naked before the entire marketplace now. It seems to be a shift, uh, Neil, from the world that we've come from. You, you, you often are judged by what you tell the world. And now it's by what the world tells about you. Exactly. Uh, and that shift has taken place. And it's also for CEOs and business people and, and brand managers and people like that, it's also about engaging with the community. It's mm. no good uh, just um, sending messages out one too many. Now you've got to listen to the crowd as well as involve the crowd in your business because that's where the, the future success lies. We often say it's no longer about marketing to your audience. It's about getting down into the stream of information mm. and marketing with your audience. So you have to be part of that flow. The hard part there is, you know, this uh, issue of controlling the message or controlling the brand. Yes. Which is, of course, an illusion anyway, but this is the <laughs> illusion that we operate on. So, for example, in, uh, in the advertising, they talk about earned media, bought media, and owned media. Yeah. So, yes. when, when you own your website, that you put whatever you want, and then you can buy Google AdWords, or you can buy newspaper ads, whatever. You can do all of these things, but the earned media, what people say about you, you can't control. Yeah. And this is the hard part, I think, about this idea of being naked as a company, is that uh, you don't, you have to trust the user, yeah. uh, the consumer or the partner, to say stuff about you. And what we're learning from the marketplace is that the market trusts that information much more than they do the official information. I always say you know, to companies that understand that the opinion of somebody you've never met on a trip advisor or whatever else it may be actually carries more weight than a $10 million advertising campaign. Because people want to hear what other people have got mm. to say, mm. rather than what you as the company are saying to them. You know, what, what's interesting to me is how, what we've been teaching about leadership. Mm. If you think of what's taught around leadership in business schools, uh, even today, leading Ivy Leagues of the world, this is a completely different notion yeah. to what will qualify a great leader in the world of tomorrow. Because this is not about imposing a will or imposing a product or a message. It's really about the marketplace uh, sharing a message and, and uh, propagating that message. So it, it, it's, it's you being prepared to make yourself vulnerable mm. and expose yourself and then trusting the unpredictability of the outcome and hoping that it's a good one, one that you have not much control over. I think you know, Kevin Roberts from Such and Such has said that yeah, now, nowadays a, a great leader is not just a director but also a connector. Absolutely. And, and, yes. and this is, yes. I think it's hard to be both actually, mm. what some people have accomplished. You know, uh, Steve Jobs was obviously more for the director, <laughs> tie rater, uh, whatever. My way you know, so, so that's different, but, but uh, and that was still successful. But to be a connector is a different skill. Yes. And also, I think that is uh, a very large uh, dichotomy between the fact that you want to be maybe personally private, but as a business person, you are you're actually naked. Because, right? And absolutely, and the, this, this idea of 
control being an illusion. It's an absolute illusion. And not only externally to companies, but also within companies, you know, um, having a, a top-down approach, you know, this is the mission and vision and the CEO knows best, is actually nonsense in the new world and increasingly so in the future, where some of the best ideas might come from way, way down in the organization. Mm -hmm. And if they're given a chance to, to be um, uh, explored, and even so some ideas from customers or yeah. suppliers, yeah. given an idea to uh, flourish, an opportunity to flourish, can actually be a, a completely um, unprecedented success. But a liberating, a liberating idea. But you know, you're so right that business schools traditionally have taught a different kind of leadership. Uh, very often when we talk about the concept of the end of control, you can actually see the anxiety in the room of business executives saying, hang on, hang on, I'm supposed to be in control. And it's, you know, it's making them understand that you can still be, you, know, you still have to control the vision, but you have to lead it rather than force it. You can't force it onto the marketplace anymore. The way I try to put it very often is that you have to lead from the center, or you rather you have to lead from the front by being in the center. Now in the old days, the chief executive was out there untouchable. Now you have to be connected in 360 degrees in the center of your organization. Yes. Yeah. and actually lead from the center. Neil, I was told that my first appointment was a CEO, uh, a mentor came to me and said, Anton, you'll have to realize that from now on you will be very lonely. Yeah. <laughs> and in fact, if you think about it, that's totally counter to what you're suggesting, yeah. is that when you're in the middle of, 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 a, of an employee base and, and a client and customer base, you're actually never lonely, yeah. uh, but you'll never be more exposed. So you're quite vulnerable. But it's what, it's what Doug said. Um, the old style of leadership is you assume that because you're the leader, you must now make all the decisions and you must have all the wisdom. And, and the old style of leader says, there's wisdom all around me and it, you know, it's my ego doesn't supersede what needs to be done. Right. Again, it's not, uh, although there are threats involved, it's also opportunities because you can use that whole wisdom of the crowd, the power of the crowd to elevate your business. It's not mm -hmm. necessarily purely a negative uh, but That ego thing is interesting because it's, it's such a powerful issue in business. Uh, and the modern Buddhists talk about it very beautifully. They say it consists simply of three words, you and me. And the world we come from, the you and the me word are being dominant. And the world we're shifting towards is a world where the and word is actually much more dominant. Uh, and it's all about those connections and the, and the engagement and so forth. The value arises from the and, not from the you and me. No, no, absolutely right. I think one of the, uh, the, uh, the, this image, you know, I think Don Tapscott talks about uh, when uh, when you have to be more naked as a company, then you have to look good when you come out of the water. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and this is a consequence, the fact that we are more naked, we have to actually look better. Correct, take, uh, take some yeah. care of so what you look I, al I always say that you know, it's basically a perpetual WikiLeak for, for every company. Whatever you would try to hide, especially banks, for example, mm -hmm. banks, insurance company, governments, politicians, you know, whatever you're trying to hide is gonna come out, so, so you have to take care of, of, of of yeah. being transparent in the first place. For example, many airlines, hotel companies are trying to hide flaws. It's, it's better to actually talk about the flaws when yeah. they come out and yeah. take them in. This is a very common problem in TripAdvisor. Yes, and, uh, this whole debate about, you know, you can't be perfect all the time and you yeah. can apologize. Yeah. Like uh, Zappos is a great example of the yes. same company, how they have incorporated, and Amazon in general, mm. is mm. a great example of how they have incorporated that being naked as a company. And, and giving you know, the light to the customers. And in fact, what yeah. they've done good is made that an attribute of yeah. uh, their brand and their relationship with the marketplace, as opposed to something which they pass over to the legal department or the risk department. <laughs> yes. You know, this is a real central strategic advantage as opposed to uh, some damage control. One of, our, one of the, 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 the trends agencies talks about what they call flawsome marketing, uh -huh. as opposed to awesome marketing. <laughs> and it's the idea that if you prepare to admit that there are flaws in what you're doing as a company, Suddenly you have a human face, and people are much more inclined to warm to you because they see the company as being human, rather than this cold, removed, aloof edifice. <laughs> so flawsome marketing is one of the concepts of the future. I like that. And these are some of the lessons that uh, the banks and the oil companies have to learn in the future. Very expensive, so if you take the oil industry, I mean, what the cost was of, of remedying the leak uh, in the Gulf before it happened was you know, $100 million or something like that, uh, but the cost consequent upon not preparing it in advance was billions. Yes. It's a small spill in a very big ocean. <laughs> so where, where can people find out more about this concept? Do you have a... a yes, indeed. You, you can or? go to futureworld.org and there you'll see a, a tab marked themes and all those themes are listed over there and the details of what it's all about, summaries of the themes and also who's able to deliver these themes, either as a workshop or as a keynote presentation. Okay. And there are also plenty of mind bullets that touch on the naked leadership theme. 
which you can also read on futureworld.org or mindbullets.net. And I'm glad to say we keep our clothes on and we deliver it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. Thank you. <laughs> Good. Do you want to do a little piece on where we can find literature on each other? Might as well just re-record that snippet quickly. Okay, we? yeah, okay. Let me, all right. Okay, we've, we've talked a lot about the, the thoughts that we have and the kind of concepts that we have. Where does one find literature and material on the Futures Agency and on your work in particular? Yeah, my work is, in, I'm, uh, you know, if you're looking for GERD, G-E-R-D, on the internet, I'm number two. The first one is the gastrointestinal reflux disease. <laughs> so I, I, am, I am the second one. So if you just Google G-E-R-D and Future, then you can see all my stuff. I have an app called Futurist that you can download for Android and, and Apple. I have uh, a new website going on actually this week called futurewithgerd.com and I'm on Facebook, G. Leonard, I'm on YouTube. Mm -hmm. So I mean if you just look for Gerd on the internet and all my books are available for free, including one book you mentioned earlier, I wrote a book called The End of Control. Yeah. That is available for free. I just Google Gerd, G-E-R-D and free PDFs. And of and course I'm, I'm very heavy on Twitter, G-L-E-O-N-H-R-D, yeah. Gerd on Twitter as well. It's interesting you talk about free. I mean, we've also now released a great deal of our material for free. We have the Mind Bullets, which every Thursday we publish this newsletter from the future. And if you simply search on the internet for Mind Bullets, you'll find it. Equally, they are free. You can subscribe to them. They're downloaded to your laptop for free. And then um, all you have to do is look, look up Future World on the internet. And you'll future. find us on YouTube. You'll find us on Twitter. You'll find us on all over the place. Facebook. There's a, and Google Plus. Google Plus, there's a website, um, futureworld.org, where we run something called Futures Forum, which is a running blog. Every day we're posting ideas, thoughts, things that we pick up, a very useful resource to go to to have a look yeah. at what's happening in the world to keep abreast of some of the changes that we're yeah, so You'll never be bored again with all the stuff you can read. And of course, there's SlideShare. <laughs> yeah. You guys from SlideShare? Yeah, with, are, uh, lots of, I have 200 slideshows you can download and waste a whole tree on printing. Only 200. <laughs> yeah, Basically, it yeah I'm a la I was just really lazy. But, uh, it's yeah. everything you want to know about the future, but you're too scared to ask. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks very much for tuning in. <laughs>